Hi, welcome back to Youth Coach Jam's online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we're going to do a few different things, but our lesson is going to focus on building a very simple food web. Um, if you haven't gone over this in your science classes yet, a food web consists of all the um, food chains in an ecosystem, and normally something is like a mouse could be, a mouse would eat, I don't know, uh, bugs and grass and then it could be eaten by any kind of predator, a fox, a bird, um, like a hawk or an owl or something. So normally one item is part of several single food chains. One um, animal is part of several single food chains. Today we're just gonna be doing a one-to-one -one kind of relationship just because of our space is so small and um, your instructor does not have good artistic skills. So I relied on the sprites to kind of do this. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today is going to be different in that we don't have the activity sheets to do. Um, we're going to be taking a different approach to this and building it from scratch. Um, just a quick reminder, we upload our lessons Mondays and Wednesdays and our um, hangout sessions, our Q&A sessions are at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can just go to the website. Um, youthcodejam.org and go to our Bits and Bytes online page. Oops, we don't need that, let's close out. Um, and scroll down and the big green button that you come across will be, so we need to update this from yesterday, but our big, this big green button right here will allow you to register for the Q&A sessions. You will be sent a code for each session you sign up for, um, a link and a code. Uh, but let's get back to the activity. So like I was saying today, we're going to build a food chain. And this is what our final product is going to look like. Uh, how do I? I'm going to press the green button. So our energy starts at the sun, is absorbed by the plants, which are eaten by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is eaten by the hen. And yes, an owl can eat a hen. I double checked. I looked it up. It can happen. An owl could eat a whole chicken. Um, it doesn't look like it in comparison. Both birds are actually pretty big. Um, owls are huge. <laughs> you don't normally see it. So this is kind of what we're gonna do. So again, what that was doing was the sun is normally considered the starter point for your energy being passed up through the food chain. Um, plants absorb the light from the sun and also nutrients from the ground that we're going with from the sun here. So the plants, the strawberry here, absorbs that energy. Um, and then it grows, which if you noticed, it got a little bigger. And then the grasshopper would eat the, the strawberry and it hops when it gets to eat the strawberry because it's so excited it got to eat. Um, and then the grasshopper is eaten by the hen who hops up and down. And then like you saw up here, the owl's going to eat the hen. So um, some of my students, we have a similar activity with ozobots that we do, and some of the students have referred to it as the circle of life. So if you haven't heard of a food web before, it's basically the circle of life. Um, everything is food for something else, and that's okay. Um, but today, so like I said earlier, we're not going to be doing activity sheets. And the reason for this is a lot of times with these, I know when I have step-by-step -step instructions, I just go through the motions. I don't really absorb what I'm doing. Um, so what we really want is to familiarize you, introduce you to a thought process of what building a program without instructions would look like. Um, so we'll still go through this step by step. I'm not releasing you to do it on your own. Um, you're welcome to try. You saw how it's supposed to end up. This activity is not shared. So if you try and go see it on my page, you won't be able to. Um, that's because I don't want you guys to look at the code just yet. And plus you're gonna see the code. Um, I am going to pull up the inside so that I can look at this as we go. Um, but let's go ahead and open a new browser and go to Scratch. And you'll hit the Create button. It loads. Okay, so if you don't have an account, you will have that um, tutorial window hovering about this spot where mine is circling. Go ahead and close out of that and go ahead and delete this sprite one. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is choose a backdrop. For this activity, I chose this one, the blue sky. You can choose whatever one you want. Um, it doesn't affect what we're doing here. 
And then, so I started with this, I went piece by piece in this program. So we're gonna kind of replicate that. And I might switch back and forth between my finished code and my unfinished code, just so that I can remind myself um, of what I did. And you'll see that there will be other ways, there will be other blocks that we could use. You're welcome to try those out in your code if you don't wanna follow mine exactly along, that's fine. That's actually great. Um, we like it when you guys experiment. Um, but I just wanted to try some different things today. We use a lot of the same blocks over and over. So today I pulled a couple different ones that we could try. Um, so to start, we're gonna start with the sun because that's our starting point. And I'm going to come up here into the search bar and search sun because it's the fastest way to get there rather than scrolling. And then I'm gonna position the sun right about here in the corner. Okay, so I have the sun now, and the next thing I need is energy. Uh, they didn't really have any pre-built energy things that I liked, so I came down here back to the Choose a Sprite, and I chose a paintbrush. I changed my fill color to yellow because that's the color I wanted my energy to be. You guys can choose whatever color you want for this, um, so you just click on the spill box and then drag the sliders around till you get the color you want. So I. My color is at 16, my saturation is at 83, that's fine. And then I'm gonna click off here and click on the paintbrush. And for now, I'm just gonna draw a couple squiggles. Um, these don't have to be perfect, they can do whatever you want. That's how I'm gonna represent my energy. It's really light, I know, but I'm gonna, whoops, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna come over here now to the back to this arrow so that I can move them. I want these to be in the center of my picture. So where this, um, you know, that circle with the lines through it just got really dark. I wanna put those as centered as possible. Um, so what that will do is that when we go to move things, it will put them where we expected. Originally, when I was working through this, I left them up here and my energy level was going off to the side because technically this whole big square is our sprite. Um, so putting it in the center aligns with how the others work. Everything works from the center of it. So we have it here, center. I'm going to come over to the Sprite control panel, and I'm going to name it Energy. You can leave it as Sprite 1. I want it to be labeled Energy. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to code. So you've noticed we've done a lot of setup so far. We haven't done the code. Now we're going to start getting into the code, and we're going to piecemeal this, like I said. Okay, so... When we press start, what do we want? I'm going to have to shrink this. There we go. We want the, we want to tell the energy where to go. Okay. So we're going to use the green flag as our action. So we're going to grab the when green flag click block from the events drawer and drag it onto our space. Now, when you're doing this, make sure the energy is the highlighted block. This is gonna be our main um, sprite that we use, but we will be clicking on the other one. So make sure that right now your energy is the activated sprite. All right, so now I'm going to do, I'm gonna try something different just because to try it out. We're gonna go to the motion drawer and grab this go to X and Y block. But instead of setting coordinates by looking up of here, I'm actually going to go into the sensing drawer and scroll down a little bit and get, you see this block? It's a little oval, it says backdrop number of stage. We're going to grab that one and put it in the circle for the X value and grab another and put it in the circle for the Y value. And then we're going to change stage to sun in both of those circles and then X position and the second one should be Y position. So what that's gonna do is when we hit this green flag, our energy is starting at the sun. So it's gonna come from the sun, all right? And then we're gonna wait a second. We're just gonna let the program start so that we can see it. So there's a lot of pauses um, I left a lot at the default one second. You guys can play around with different values. Um, you can put in from zero to one, so you could do something like 0.5 or 0.75 or stuff like that to slow it down or speed. Uh, well, closer to one is slow, closer to zero is fast. So however fast you wanna make that, right? And then we're gonna tell it to go somewhere else. So we're starting here and then we need a second block. So we're gonna come over here and grab, well, a second sprite. So I'm grabbing a strawberry. 
is a strawberry rose on the ground. And I'm going to drag it about here. And while we're on the strawberry, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do go to the event drawer and get the Gwen Greenfly click block, and then go to looks and grab this set size two. And we're going to set size to 40%. because That is a giant strawberry. Okay, so now when I hit this block, that happens. So our strawberry is about there. It can hover because it looks like it's on the bush. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a when I receive message block. Okay. Um, and we're just going to leave that there for now and come back to it. For a second, let's go to the sun. Because if you remember on my finished one, I had it moving. And that was really just for something fun. But to do that, um, highlight the sun, go into the event store, get the win green flag clicked block. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm just having this run. So I'm going to go to control and I grabbed the forever block. And then in motion, I grabbed the rotate 15 degrees right or clockwise. So this first one, you can view this as right or clockwise. Put it in there and then I got a wait one second. And this is where I paused. Um, I made a shorter time. I think I set it to point two. So now if we run this, our strawberry didn't change, but it's at the right size. Our stuff is still up here. So now we have it set up to where we can finally move our energy. So we're gonna tell it to go to, we're gonna tell it to glide. We're gonna grab in the motion drawer, go to glide one second to random position. Go ahead and grab that one, do a drop down. Instead of random position, we want it to glide to the strawberry. And then go back to the event drawer. We're going to broadcast a message. The broadcast message one. Use the drop down to create a new message. I'm just going to have this new message be at strawberry. And then we're going to have it wait one second. So back in control, grab the wait one second block. Okay. So right now, that should work. So we're waiting. There's nothing else for it to do in our program, so it's actually stopped. So we're going to stop the program. And in the strawberry, we're going to remember our when I receive message one block. Well, now we have a message. So we're going to say when it gets the at strawberry. Um, if So what we want it to do here is we want it to increase by, so in looks, go to change size by 10. So you can see here with the strawberry highlighted, we're at 40. Now let's hit that green flag. And maybe starts there, it's been up to 50. Okay, so we had it grow bigger because it got more energy. It was able to feed and grow. So that's where we're showing that. So now that we're here, we can finally go to our grasshopper. So in the choose a stripe, add the grasshopper stripe, or you can choose any other um, bug you want because pretty much all of them will eat fruit or grass. And so now we have a giant grasshopper. So while he's clicked, I'm gonna put him down kind of in that corner. And on events, when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to set his size to Let's do, let's see what 50% looks like for him. It might be too small. Let's start with 50. Okay, 50 is a good size because otherwise he might blend too much because he is green. But I'm going to put him right about here. And then I'm going to switch back to the energy. And we want to move the energy from the strawberry to here. So I'm going to repeat what we did up here for the for moving to the strawberry, and I'm just gonna right click and duplicate that code. And I'm gonna change the strawberry to the grasshopper, and then make a new message, because it's no longer at the strawberry. So when it receives at grasshopper. So now that we are sending a message to the grasshopper, we have to handle that message. 
So click back on the Grasshopper Sprite, go to Events, grab the When I Receive, so my already default to the at Grasshopper message, that's fine. We're going to grab the control loop of repeat 10, change that 10 to six, go to the looks drawer. We're gonna have it um, hop up and down. So go to the looks drawer and we're going to change it to, we're gonna do next costume, put it inside your repeat block. And then finally, we're gonna do a wait one second um, this is another one where we're going to speed this one second up. So we're actually going to make it a 0.2 again, I think. So let's test that out. Hit our green flag. So there you go. So that's perfect rotation. Um, just to be safe, we're going to go back to the look drawer and set our costume on start. Grab the switch costume too. And on start, we're going to set have it start at Grasshopper A. So it's always in this position when it starts in case you wanna play with your counts and have it repeat more than six times. I have it going through one rotation of the costumes. If you look down, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes through six costumes and then returns to its starting point. Okay. So we have the sun to the strawberry to the grasshopper. The hen is next, and we get to do um, a couple different things with the hen. So go to choose a sprite, and in the search bar, type in H-E-N, grab the hen. So if you notice, the hen is facing towards the right of my screen, and I want it to face towards the left. Um, so to do that, we're going to come down into this sprite box. Now, you can do this with code. I just didn't feel like doing it. Um, Click inside this direction block. And you see down here where it has this rotate button and then these two triangles facing each other. Those triangles decide which direction the sprite is facing. So we're gonna click it and then we're gonna rotate the chicken negative, what are we gonna hit? We should hit negative 90. So you could have gone, if you went this way up towards the top, you would get, it's negative 90 no matter what. Okay. So we're gonna rotate it till this little button says negative 90, or you can come down here and type it in. And now our chicken's facing the right way. Okay. So we don't have to do any starter code for this one. It's in the right position. We can go ahead and head straight back to energy. And once again, we're going to copy these three blocks. So right click. If you're on a Mac, you might need to, if you don't have right click installed on your uh, Mac uh, laptop, there we go, then you'll need to do, you'll need to hold down control while you do the regular left click on your trackpad. Windows and all mice should have right click enabled. If you're using a desktop Mac, you might have to go into your settings and enable that, or just again, use your keyboard and hold down control and then left click and that will duplicate this. You can also just go back into the drawers where we pulled all these from and put them here. Um, so now we're gonna change on this third block, we're gonna change it to the hen. And we're gonna make a new message. So drop down, hit the drop down button, click new message. I'm gonna say at hen. And then we're gonna click back to the hen. And in the event drawer, grab the when broadcast, where is it? When I receive a broadcast. And it's still set to grasshopper. We want it to be at the when I receive at hen. And what the hen is gonna do is just very simple. They're going to move up. So we're gonna go to the motion drawer. We're just gonna have them pop up and down. And we're going to get this change Y by 10. Go to control and grab the wait one second. Change that to 0.5 seconds and then go back to motion and get the change by, get change by Y again. This time you want it to come back down. So we're going to do a negative 10 and then hit play and let's see what happens.
Okay. So our program's working so far. And what all this has been is we've been going step by step and figuring out how to get from here, from point A to point B. So originally we were trying to get the energy from the sun to the strawberry. And there are lots of ways you could have done this, um, mostly with the motion drawer, but you could have done uh, glide to the coordinates. You could have done a point in direction. There's lots of ways you could have figured out how to move it. This is the way that I liked how it looked, essentially. I liked how this one worked. I thought it worked well for the idea. Um, the other things we've done in the energy, what we've done is we've changed sizes of the sprites so that it all fits in our screen and looks a certain way. We've had different motions occur. And that was done by, on this hen, it was simple. I want it to go up and down. So why did I grab the Y block? Well, because Y is um, basically the vertical axis. If you don't know what that is, it's up and down. So I wanted to move the hen up and down. If I wanted to, to move left and right, I would have used the change X option. That's right here. I didn't. It's time how it is. Um, so we used Y, I wanted to move up and down. On the strawberry, I wanted to increase the size just a little, because we didn't want a giant strawberry. So originally we used the set size block to make it smaller, and then we changed it by 10. And it's only gonna go up to 50 because it's only changing when it's getting this message. Um, and then the sun, the sun is always gonna move. Um, we could have it end after a certain time, or we could change the loop here. I'm just having it run forever. So our final step is to get the owl. Now I didn't really have a good spot in this background to put the owl, so I went ahead and I also added a tree just for fun. I added this one. You guys can add this tree if you want. And you can also draw your own because like with the energy, you guys are able to make your own sprites. So, and I made this tree written 80%. So it's a big tree. And then I went back into the sprites and I got the owl. And just like with the chicken, I changed the way it faced. Now we can do this with code. I think it's a little faster to do it with this part. We're gonna do, change it to be negative 90. So now our uh, owl's facing the right way. And then I'm gonna also increase its size to 125. All of this is done in the sprites panel. You guys can do it with code. Um, if you wanted to change something size with code or the orientation, you would do the, let's see. You would use point and direction to change which way they face. And then there's a left, right, set rotation style, left, right. So that would ensure that um, it's facing the, normally if you don't do this one, your owl would be upside down. But if you use this with this block, the point and direction block, the owl would face the same way. And then in the looks drawer, you can use the set size like we did for the strawberry. So you can set size here and change size. Um, I just decided I wanted to use the sprites panel for this one. We don't use it a lot because we want to introduce you to the code, but I wanted to show you that there's other ways to do things. Okay, so we're gonna click back on the energy. And in the energy, we want it, um, so we're gonna do this one last time and copy these three blocks. Have the energy go to the owl. Add a new broadcast message that says at owl. Okay. And then we're going to click back on the owl sprite and then do a when, when I receive message at owl. Um, then we're going to switch costume to owl C. And that's actually the one we want because that's the one with its wings spread. Um, just to be safe, I'm going to add in some protection code basically or validation code. I'm not really sure how we want to call this, but this ensures that um, the owl starts in this resting position that it's in. So we're going to make it the owl A when it runs. And now we're going to click on our green flag. 
and watch it, the energy go to the strawberry, to the grasshopper, to the hen, to the owl. So the owl spreads its wings because it had some food. Um, a real food web would probably continue further. I don't know if the owl's at the top of this uh, food chain or not, but this is a very simplified version of what a food web looks like and how energy travels among that because everything gets energy from what it eats, right? Um, but that is our main program today. If you guys want to try it with, there's lots of different animals in here that you guys could try it with. So you could make up your own food chain and figure out what eats what and how that energy would travel. And you could use the basis of these ideas that we went over today um, and how to figure out how to make that energy move. You could also try out different blocks because like I said, there were lots of ways to do what we did today. There's not just a single way to do it. But yeah, so again, I apologize if you are missing the activity sheets, but I think it was important to kind of watch this and think it through. And if you did miss something, kind of figure out what that was. Because we won't always have instruction sheets to look off of. So it's kind of important to sit down and think about what goes into the program and what you need to do to get from A to B to C to D and so on. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you're doing well with school and whatever else you have going on. Uh, I don't have any news for us from YCJ to share with you guys, I don't think. We just wrapped up the first virtual jam. We have more stuff coming down as soon as we figure it out. I'm trying to get back to the page. Okay. Um, I think the only new stuff is that every Monday there will be new, what is that? new brain breaks. So if you guys have been doing those or seeing them on social media, there will be more here. Um, we're trying to make sure that they are now translated in both English and Spanish. So whichever one you need will be available. But they're just some of them. These are family activity based, so they'll all have different focus. So there will be family activity ones, coding ones, um, logic, which are kind of like word math problems. Uh, I forgot what the other one was, but there will be different categories each week for things you can try out. And if you do one and you want to tell us what the results were, what you thought, you can go on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and share your results uh, with the hashtag we can jam and then at us um, or at youth code jam on all plat platforms. Um, we would really love to see what you guys are doing. I would also really love to see how you guys are working with our lessons and what you guys think about these bits and bytes lessons and what else you might want to do or what you might think might be better. Um, so if you have time, we would really love for you to do a, um, we would love for you to join us at our live sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's free. You do not have to just, um, you don't have to pay. It's just an email that you get. We don't email you about anything else going on. These emails are strictly for this. If you want other emails, you'll have to register for that elsewhere or click buttons when you sign up, but you will only get emails for these lessons. Um, this is also a really good time to uh, just give us feedback about what it's running and, you know, what you guys are liking and not liking about this. So definitely sign up. I would love to see as many people there as possible so that we can really make this beneficial to you guys. Um, that's all I have for today. So I hope to see you on Tuesday and we'll have a new lesson up on Wednesday. Have a great day.